Okay, next is uh, Virginia Valentine. Virginia graduated in 1980 from the University of Idaho with a BS in Civil Engineering and earned a Master's in Public Administration from the University of Nevada, Las Vegas. Phi Alpha Alpha, the National Honorary Society for Public Affairs and Administration in 2000. After graduation, Virginia started her first job as a design engineer at JUB Engineers in Coeur d'Alene, Idaho. In 1981, Virginia moved to Las Vegas, Nevada, where she, went, where she went to work as a design engineer for VTN Nevada, and two years later joined URS Consulting Engineers as a project engineer. In 1984, Virginia moved to Black and Beach uh, Consulting Engineers in Las Vegas after a project engineer or as a project engineer for environmental projects. She managed the first comprehensive study of the Tropicana and Flamingo Hotel washes in Clark County. Virginia became the first chief engineer and general manager of the Clark County Regional Flood Control District in Las Vegas in 1986. She was successful in gaining authorization and appropriations for a $250 million federal project. In 1993, Ms. Valentine became a senior vice president of Post, Buckley, uh, Shoeing, and Jernigan. So you have to help me with that one too when you get up here. <laughs> a national consulting engineering firm. At PBSJ, Virginia was responsible for overseeing the public works and environmental divisions in the Western region. She was the principal in charge for the program management services provided to the city of, New of North Las Vegas. Instituted the GIS division within the environmental services in the western region and was the project manager for the first fully GIS flood control master plan for the Las Vegas Valley. And I must say, somehow flood control in Las Vegas doesn't jog my mind, but I'm sure it, it happens. Uh, Virginia became the city manager for the city of Las Vegas in 1998. The city of Las Vegas has 16 departments, 2,800 employees, and in fiscal uh, year 22, a combined budget of $740 million. Four years later, she became senior vice president of the Las Vegas Chamber of Commerce. She was responsible for the government affairs department, including state and local government lobbying on business issues, and represented the chamber at the 2003 special session of the legislature. In 2002, Virginia served as assistant county manager for Clark County, and as Chief Executive Officer for Clark County, Nevada. She provided administrative oversight for 38 diverse geographically dispersed departments and agencies, more than 12,000 full-time employees, and 4,000 part-time employees. Virginia has been honored with several prestigious awards, including the 2010 Woman of Distinction Award in Government, the 2008 ASCE Civil Government Award, and in 2006, she was listed as an extraordinary woman, engineer in changing our world, the true stories of women engineers. And I believe, yes, she is an extraordinary woman. So Virginia, would you mind coming to the podium? Thank you. I have to admit, when I first received the letter from the University of Idaho saying that they wanted to induct me into the Distinguished Academy of Distinguished Engineers, but my first thought was, oh my God, he lost my transcripts. <laughs> but um, I am truly, it's truly an honor, honoring and humbling experience um, to be here with you today, particularly with so many distinguished engineers, and I am so impressed with um, my fellow inductees. Um, I think Jack took most of my speaking points, but I too have to tell you, I am very proud of being from the University of Idaho. And there are four things, four areas that specifically I think of when I think of my education here at the University of Idaho. And first is the faculty. I had an amazing faculty. Um, I, I was the only woman in my class the year I graduated. There were other women engineers around. Um, but I would really be remiss if I didn't talk about for a minute their commitment and some of the individuals who really helped me. Um, you could 
literally go into these engineering buildings on a Saturday and Sunday to do your homework and run into most of the faculty where I was. The last time I was at this expo two or three years ago, maybe longer, I was looking for Dr. Milligan because I want to say hello. He was one of my favorites. And uh, they told me that he had driven to Boise to teach an engineering class. And I think the kind of commitment that went on here to the students, to knowing the students personally, uh, you, you just can't substitute that, I think, in uh, an institution of this size and quality. Um, I also want to mention, uh, you know, Dr. Wallace, Dr. Milligan, uh, Cal Warnick. Um, they were all great professors. I, I had a very brief and painful class from Dr. Jacobson. You <laughs> <laughs> had a name for you too, Jake, but I'm not going to use it today. <laughs> Amazing. They were very mentoring, nurturing. People say to me still, wasn't it tough being the only woman? And I have to say, no, it was wonderful. I loved it. every minute of it. Um, the My professors, my fellow students, I would have never made it through college without them, frankly. Um, so that was a wonderful, a wonderful experience for me. The second thing I want to mention is the curriculum. And a couple of people today, including Dean Software, have mentioned the fundamentals. Um, I feel like I got exposed to just about every facet of civil engineering and some chemical engineering and mechanical engineering too along the way. And uh, not just the excellence in the basic sciences. My first advisor was, and many of them, many of you probably know Dr. Renfrew, um, who was also just a, a tremendously wonderful advisor and suggested maybe I should go into engineering and not chemistry. Um, but he was, uh, just outstanding. Um, those basic sciences, that whole range of engineering, um, I was sort of shocked when I got out of college and after I moved to Las Vegas to find that uh, not every engineer, civil engineer, took hydrology and hydraulics. They weren't part of the undergraduate curriculum. They weren't offered or they were offered as electives. And in some places they were actually graduate classes with the same textbook. And so um, I think that was really hard to beat too. And I too, I don't want to say competed, but as my colleagues, there were engineers from all over, all over the country. Um, when I got involved with the University of Nevada, Las Vegas, one of the first things we did was we proxied EIT training for to prepare students to take the EIT. And you know, not some of you will guess what I'm about to say, but we used to proctor those EIT training sessions were videotapes from the University of Idaho, and I couldn't have been prouder. The third thing I want to mention are the problem-solving skills. And I know all of you who have engineering degrees here probably heard 6,000 times we're going to have you think like an engineer. Those problem-solving skills today, not just in engineering, but in management, and even in parenting, have, uh, I think, truly been the, the thread, the foundation of what I've been able to do in my career across many different topics and areas. So that, those problem-solving skills, it, it's part, I think, of the culture here of the College of Engineering, and I'm, I'm grateful for that. Obviously, I want to mention the relationship, because my, my best friends are engineers still. I married an engineer. Um, I hung out with engineers in college. I still hang out with engineers. I love engineers. Um, I love the way this university has kept in touch with me as a graduate. This has been a relationship for me that went way beyond um, the day I left Moscow. And uh, I'm very happy to be back here. And I am humbled, I am grateful, and thankful for this recognition today. I want to congratulate all my fellow inductees. It's been nice talking to you before. And last but not least, uh, I have to thank my dad, Dr. Bax, who has an undergrad degree in industrial engineering, and uh, who's been a great inspiration for me. He was my mentor, my critic. Um, he dropped me off here over 30 years ago today, kind of slowed down about five miles an hour, opened the door and said, see you Thanksgiving. And uh, so again, I just want to, I want to thank him for coming all the way from Florida to be with me today. It's a, just a beautiful campus and I just couldn't be more excited and happy. So thanks to all of you.
impressive group of folks. Let's give them a applause.